And there we go. Uh, hey, everybody. This is Matt Williams from the Foundation Roundtable. I'm here with my very good friend, uh, Carrie Davis of the Dark Angel Medical. Um, hi. Uh, we're, uh, tonight we're going to be talking about everything, uh, anything and everything, really. But well, we, we want to talk about medical. Uh, Carrie was just just here in the, uh, the, the big mitten state, uh, what, two weeks ago? Yeah, yeah. So you guys were here for bullets and bandages. Uh, dart one, so it was direct action response training. Yep. At one and two. Yeah. So what? That was uh, five, six days of training here in Michigan at yeah. the uh, Northern Woods Training Facility. Some good stuff, man. Yeah, it was sure. awesome. Trek hosting. Um, yeah. Great facility. Um, yeah. A lot of cool stuff going on there. But um, Carrie, well, let me let me back up real quick. I first met Carrie, um, obviously in a Dark Angel Medical class uh since then man he's you know you and i have been we've been buds we hit it off uh, yeah. uh, pretty much right away um and i want to say and i've said this before and i want to say that medical is so important to me and i believe so much in what you're doing that not only have i been to multiple classes of yours i have sent my mother i have sent my aunt and i have yeah. sent my oldest son yeah. um he i think andrew my oldest boy i think he's I think he's been in more class time or just as much as I have. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. And, and he also has the distinction of being the youngest uh, Dark Angel Medical alumni, too. He came to his first class uh, when he was 11 years old. Yeah. And honestly, ask better questions than a lot of the adults in the class. A lot of the grown ups. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's, he's got a smart mama and man. she's really pretty. Yeah, he's a so. sharp, sharp kid, man. Sharp well, kid. Thank you. He's, he's, uh, he makes, his mom and I, my wife and I, are happy uh, yeah. all the time. He's a good kid. Good. Um, so, uh, Carrie, like, you've been on this podcast or show or you whatever we're calling it um, before, but it went straight to straight to Facebook. So, if you know, for the people who haven't seen uh, seen you before, or heard you speak, would you just give everybody a quick origin story, if you will, a rundown yeah. of who you are? Yeah, man, sure. Uh, I'm a redneck from Route 2 Seminary, Mississippi. I uh, was born and raised in Mississippi. Uh, left there, uh, joined the military, joined the Air Force. Uh, I was a medic in the Air Force, got a special duty assignment up to Pope, Fort Bragg as a uh, flight medic. I uh, worked on an airborne liaison team with 82nd Airborne uh, up there for a few years, deployed a lot all over the world, and then uh, taught officer training school with Montgomery, Alabama at Maxwell Air Force Base as a NCOIC of medical readiness. Uh, during that time, I worked as a street paramedic in Alabama and decided to go to nursing school. So I went to nursing school, finished up nursing school while I was in the reserves, got out of the reserves in 2007. Uh, start, I've been working critical care in ER. Uh, I started that in about 2003 and left, that bed, left the bedside a couple years back. And then um, I still keep my license active and everything. Uh, so you can call me Fokker or Gaylord, whatever you want to. That's cool. And then I started working with Magpul because I'd moved out to Colorado to take a nursing job. Uh, and so started working with Magpul, worked with them for a few years, and then uh, went up to uh, uh, started teaching part time at Six Hour Academy. And during that time, um, I started Dark Angel Medical. So I've been I left I left uh, Magpul in June of 2011, started uh, Dark Angel Medical in August and then uh, September started at SIG. So been a, it was a busy, busy year. So, and been out here in Colorado ever since. So, all right. Yeah. Uh, sh strange aside, a uh, couple weeks, maybe a month and a half ago, I had a couple that wanted to do a private shotgun class that were from Connecticut. And you actually taught them a pistol class at SIG Academy at one point in time, a couple of years ago, I guess. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's my guy. That's my guy. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah very, I, thought, I mean, I felt pretty cool by proxy, yeah. to be honest with you. Small world. Yeah. Yeah. You're not kidding. So uh, let's let's just kind of jump right into it, man. Um, yeah. Well, <laughs> dumb question. Why is it? Is there a difference between medical and first aid? Uh Depends. Uh, I mean, any even basic trauma care, everyday trauma care is first aid, you know, because you're the, the first responder lens first aid. You know, first aid is whatever treatment is uh, uh, 
is necessary by virtue of whatever injury has been incurred. And, and then they're the, the first one on scene. So that's your rendering first aid before they reach a, another level or higher level of care, hopefully. Uh, now, there are differences between a first aid kit and a trauma kit. And that's, that's what, what I was getting at. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what, where I was going. That's what a lot of people don't get is they think, oh, I've got I've got they see ads in these these uh, for these other uh, companies uh, that have really good marketing and really and, and really good websites. But they're just a glorified first aid kit and they're paying way more than what they'll pay for a no crap trauma kit from us. But they think they're getting a trauma kit, but they're actually getting just a really good, a really, really comprehensive boo boo kit. Um, and so a first aid kit is more just for your boo-boos, you know, life's little boo-boos, you know, your, your mole skin, your sunscreen, your burn gel, your aspirin, your Tylenol, chapstick, you know, stuff like that. Whereas a trauma kit is something that's going to prevent someone from dying. A, a boo-boo, a first aid kit or a boo-boo kit is more just comfort stuff, comfort care stuff. Uh, whereas a trauma kit is something that's going to sustain life until, um, they reach a higher level of care. Think of it like a, like a patch kit for your bicycle. Okay. And you know, your patch kit allows you to, to repair that tube uh, until you can get to the bike shop. That's the same thing that our trauma kits are. Our trauma kits are just patch kits for people and the bike shop being the hospital, the ER. So that's the difference between first aid and trauma right there. And okay. a lot of people don't realize that. And when they get these kits, they think, Oh man, I'm so, I'm so prepared. Cause they got a lot of stuff in there and a lot and a lot of stuff means better. Right. Sure. You know, in, in most cases. And, and so they, and then they get this kit with all this stuff in there, but then when something traumatic happens, are they re really well and truly equipped to deal with that life threatening emergency? Do they have the proper tools uh, and enough of it to deal with a pro with a life threatening emergency? Uh, and, and un unfortunately, um, they're they're uneducated about it, and that's that's where we come in with only not only the product side but the education side too. Yeah, yeah. It, I think it's difficult for people to to look at it an actual trauma kit. So if an actual you know a dark kit, <laughs> yeah. if you will. Now okay. I put these back there because back there because I needed something to make this look cool. Yeah. Uh, and what's cooler than you know a couple of guns and yeah. some trauma kits? But Heck yeah. This is all you need, folks. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, things it's like, get, get little... it, it's like we say, you know, everything you need and nothing you don't, because in a chaotic situation, obviously a traumatic injury is going to be a chaotic situation. And if you've got a lot of stuff in there, you're going to get confused because chaos lends to confusion and confusion is going to is going to lead to that possible hesitation. And man, in a, in a situation like that, you've got to act quickly and decisively. You've got to get it going. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, and what is what is your what is your logo? It's something like where's my screen? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe simplicity, simplicity under stress. I don't know. Maybe simplicity under stress. You got to keep things simple. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. it's like up at SIG, you know, we had six hour academy. We have we teach the SIG principle, which is simple is good. I can remember that. Who who knew? You know, uh, <laughs> imagine that. And so simplicity under stress, because, you know, it's just like the old, it's like, uh, it's like the saying goes, you know, you don't, you don't rise to the occasion, you fall to your, your lowest level of training. So, yeah. and you've yeah. got to be proficient with it. So, yeah. 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 So what kind of people do you normally see come into your classes? Like who, who, who is, who's filling these classes? Man, any, anyone and everyone from 11 year old boys yep. all the way up to cardiothoracic surgeons. So, I mean, we have, we've run the gamut, you know, software programmers, rocket scientists, you know, whoever. Yeah. So are you telling me that if somebody already has medical knowledge, maybe they're an ER nurse, is that because I, clearly I don't, I'm not a doctor. Right. Uh, is someone who is an ER nurse, is it, are they going to benefit from, from taking a, say a dart one class? Yeah. And is it because you're teaching something that's so completely different or you're just teaching something that, it's a level of care that they, they weren't taught. Both. No, uh, the short answer is both because in nursing school and people think that, you know, if you're a nurse, even in the ER, they think if you're an ER nurse that you, uh, that you learn all this, this trauma medicine, you know, pre-hospital stuff, which is basically what I'm teaching is pre-hospital. Um, right. 
you you may learn some of it uh, in, in, in what we call PHTLS, pre-hospital trauma life support, uh, trauma nursing core course, uh, emergency nurse pediatric course. You will learn some pre-hospital stuff in there, but that's but not everybody knows that. So everybody coming out of nursing school um, doesn't really have a lot of pre-hospital knowledge. And so what we are teaching them, the wound pack and the tourniquets, the chest seals, things like that, that's stuff you'll never learn in, in nursing school. You know, okay. I mean, I could I could dose meds like a do, like a boss. I could change linen. I could give a bed bath. I can I can provide therapeutic co uh, communication, be a patient advocate, which is what we do as, as nurses. We are patient advocates and, and take care of these folks 100 percent, the whole spectrum. But pre-hospital is not part of our 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 core curriculum as far as uh, as far as nurses knows. And so, yeah, they learn something completely different. Cool. Very yeah. good. Very good. So what was, what, what's the bullets and bandages class about? Uh, it's just adding a new facet of stress, uh, okay. a, a new level of, uh, I'm a firm believer in stress inoculation. And so uh, you put people in force on force scenarios, uh, you ramp it up a little bit and you've already learned uh, through dart one or dart two, you've already learned uh, this, the treatment scenarios, things like that. But adding that new level of stress to it, um, where you not only have to mitigate whatever threat is there, but you also have to do provide medical care to yourself or someone else after that threat's been neutralized, then that that ramps up the stress a little bit. And plus, you know, it's a two way range. It's not a static range. It's not static. Uh, so it, it literally it literally becomes. It's very interactive. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, but it's, yeah. But it's but it's good because, like I said, it helps reinforce things. And they're like, "Wow, I put that tourniquet on and didn't even realize I had put it on." And mm. and I'm like, "That's that's what you're supposed to be doing. That means you practiced." Right. So I think it's important for for folks to realize that sometimes they might also be injured while they're trying to do these things. Right. Right. 100%. Um, and I think what's really great about the dark angel classes is you don't have to be a gun person. No, to not be at all. these classes. I mean, I know that same as myself, you know, a lot of people are just like, I'm just not a gun person. I'm right. Never going to be. That's right. fine. That's cool. Uh, this is something that, I mean, car accidents, I mean, any, any type yeah. of injury. Uh, yeah. I mean, the story you told us about um, your daughter helping out at, at yeah. school with the kids, you know, kind of like yeah. a degloving of the, yeah, she had like a total avulsion of the of the scalp. Uh, I, I'll just give people a background. Yeah. So when my daughter was in the sixth grade, she's been take she's been doing tourniquets. My youngest daughter, she's fifteen. All my kids have been through the class, um, and the last time that she went through it was just a few months back in Texas, and she volun she volunteered for it. I didn't have to I didn't have to voluntold her. Uh, so she actually said, Hey, I need, I need a refresher on this. Um, which was good because when she was in middle school or sixth grade elementary school, um, she witnessed a, a bus roll back and pin her head, her friend's head in between the bumpers. And it just kind of squished the scalp up mm. like that. And yeah, pretty gnarly. And everybody, everybody vapor lot, man, they were mud sucked on it. Well, she had a kit. She was, of course she had a kit. And of course, and so, of course she did. And, uh, and the thing is, everybody else is standing around like a mule staring at a fresh hung gate. They didn't know what the hell to do. And Never heard anyone say uh, that before one of my, in my life. One of my daddy's, one of my daddy's old friends, I was like, what? A mule staring at a fresh hung gate. So they were standing awesome. around mud sucked, vapor locked on what had happened. And instead of being a bystander, Lily Beth became a by doer. And she went up and, you know, put her gloves on, uh, pulled the flap back down. Wrapped, had a pressure bandage, you know, took out the, the pressure bandage and started wrapping her head and got it, got the bleeding stopped and, and comforted her and took care of her until the ambulance got there. And everybody was like, man, she, she did better than we did. I was like, well, I can give you the training if you want it. You they know? need to rename that school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it's just one of those things where if, if, if a, if a, an 11 year old girl can do it, just like, you know, your son, Andrew, 11 year old boy, if he can do it, yeah. And his friend Joe, when he came through the class, if he can do it, then then why not, man? They're little force multipliers because let's look at it. Let's be realistic. We're grown ups, but we do some pretty stupid crap sometimes. And it might be us 
that they're rendering aid to, you know, yeah. So, yeah. there's fifth, a high likelihood. Yep. It's always fifth. It's, it's yeah. fifth gear and hold my beer. Yeah. Ah, yeah, exactly. all the time, right? Here, I'm going to play with my karambit for a few minutes, you know, type yeah. of thing. <laughs> Andrew, you do suit chairs. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, uh, Andrew's, but you know, so Joe and his dad, Brad, they were, man, they were excited about the class. And I know yeah. they were bummed. They couldn't stay for dark too. Uh, because I'll tell you what, I think having, a child in dark two. Like, let's talk a little bit about dark two before I get yeah. too far in the weeds. Yeah. Um, well, dark one, dark two, and you just hit it on the, you hit the nail on the head with that. It's for anybody. You don't have to be a gun person at all because this, the class isn't about gunshot injuries. Yeah. We talk about it because a lot of the people in our classes are in high risk environments, jobs, things like that, whatever the case may be as instructors, um, you know, or just law enforcement, military, things right. like that. But you don't have to be a gun person at all. Uh, and, and a lot, like you said, and so dart one and dart two, um, it, it, it brings a new degree of realism, uh, and it ramps up where dart one leaves off and dart one. We're like, okay, we're giving you the foundation. It's like your foundational handgun. It's like your one Oh one, you know, one Oh one, one Oh two ish. And then in dart two, we get up to the one Oh three, one Oh four levels, you know? And so it really ramps it up and we progress it up to where, uh, people are, they're like, after the scenarios, uh, your son, Andrew, man, holy crap, that kid deserves an Oscar uh, for his performances as, as the as the one of the car accident victims that we had. And yeah. I, I mean, he, I mean, real tears crying. I was I mean, he gave me chills, man. And after after the class, after that, that one particular scenario with a couple of our uh, students in there, one of the students literally broke down and started crying yeah. because he said this. Let me know just how I'm going to, how am I going to react? He said, it, it let me know, how am I going to react with, with my wife and child? And that's, he said, that's all I could think of after he said, during the scenario, I was just taking care of the entry. But after the scenario, he said, the emotion and everything hit me. And he said, and I broke down. He said, I'd rather break down now than, than yeah. whenever something bad does happen. So yeah, dart two, you get a little refresher because a lot of people haven't been to it in a while. At that afternoon, it's all dry scenarios, yep. and you know from yourself, you you you've helped us out with it both times. The next day, man, we hit the ground. Man, it, oh man, it, it's full it's, tilt boogie, it, man. It is, yes, yeah, <laughs> full tilt like a Peter Bell, and it yeah. was. Man, I'll tell you, there wasn't yeah. a single person here that didn't have just an absolute riot. No, and I'll tell you what, the, there were people in there that, uh, for instance, I, I won't say her name, but there's a lady who said, "I am squeamish about blood." Mm -hmm. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm afraid. Um, like she's one of those people that's just like, I'm afraid I'm going to pass out. Yeah. And seeing her on day one, it was just like, oh god, is she? Oh, I don't know if she's going to make it. Right. Right. And day two, it was like, look at her go. Oh, dude, dude, yeah. Watching her progress through everything. I yes. remember one of the scenarios. One of our scenarios, she literally almost threw up. Yes, she did. I mean, she she got almost it. did. She... <laughs> hey, that just goes awesome. to show how good our moolah is for the class. You guys are magicians. But but the thing is, man, she she pushed through it and she persevered because she mm -hmm. said, I want to be able to help. I don't want to be helpless and I want to push through my fears. So, man, kudos to her and anybody that comes to the class. That is just like Dart 1. Dart two, I wanted to give you an added level of confidence so that whenever, and, you know, Mike and Ross, I know would, would echo the same exact sentiment. We want people to leave our classes, you know, 100% confident that they can, they can make a difference no matter what it is. And if they didn't know how to, if, if they couldn't help the person out, then they have that, that closure knowing that they, they, they can't. They've done everything and that they could. I mean, they've done everything yeah. they could. And so that's what I want people to know. Who, no matter who teaches a class, whether it's me or, or Ross or Mike, um, you're getting 100% solid instruction uh, because these two cats, they're not only their brothers, uh, but they're some of the most knowledgeable and passionate educators I've ever met in my life. Yeah, I love those guys. Yeah, I absolutely I do. do love them. Yeah. You know, and I, I, something I, it's important to me. Um, so my son, he's 12 now. He's, for Dart 2 anyway, he's the only child. Mm -hmm. uh, Dart 1, uh, that weekend, he had his buddy Joe. But what I thought was really awesome 
was how you, your two instructors, Mike and Ross, and then all the other students, they, they treated Andrew just like he was an adult. They treated him like one of the team. They treated him, yeah. they took him very seriously. Um, I, I think that speaks a lot to you and your guys and the environment that you guys foster. Um, right. While we were having a good time of being, you know, silly and laughing, uh, there was also, it was, okay, chop, serious time. Yeah. Serious time. Yeah. And uh, that, that was very apparent. And to me, for me as a dad of a 12 year old boy, that was important to me. Um, yeah. It was awesome. It was yeah. really, and, really cool. And, and he did very well. That's the reason I think people, people treated him that way because they saw him not acting like a child, but taking it seriously and, and acting like an adult and, and, and realizing the gravity of, of the material that was being presented and, the outcomes. What if we mm -hmm. didn't do this right? And he was even between scenarios, he was picking my brain or Ross's brain or Mike's brain. He was like asking questions. I know he was talking to you about stuff. And yeah. so to me, that's, that's what you should be doing. You should be, you should be talking about things and worst case scenario in it. Um, yeah. Because if you, if you worst case scenario, you can give yourself some, some, some situations, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. He was definitely thinking ahead. Um, yeah. So, Moving forward, what what are we looking for, or what are we looking at coming up with Dark Angel? I mean, I know you've talked about some some more stuff coming up. I know you were talking about some new products. Yeah, um, yeah, um, got some. We got some new products coming out. Um, there, everything has been unfortunately slowed down. That's been killing us uh, because our nylon production got really, really slowed down because of COVID. Okay. Um, but new products, we've got some new products coming out. Uh, hopefully hopefully uh before christmas time that's what mm. we're looking at is hopefully before christmas time um at least three new products coming out working really? on a working on a fourth uh right now it's just still in early prototype and stages so nothing nothing solid on it and that's kind of it's it's, it's kind of bums me out a little bit because um it, it's it's to the point where we're we're subject subject to you know the ability of our, of our manufacturer to work on stuff. And right now they're stretched, they're stretched to max. Right. So, so right. our prototyping takes a lot longer now. Um, so three products, hopefully solid coming out by Christmas time shortly thereafter. And then uh, another one, hopefully after that, we just did launch one of our other products called an art bag. Uh, Saw that. Yeah. I'm going to have to have one. It's, it's a nice bag, man. And it's got, and, and people like, Oh man, 600 and something dollars. I'm like, dude, it's like, it's like literally like four dart kits. And yeah, then some. In let's a bag. break that down for people. Um, <laughs> it's not just a bag you're buying. It's like a tourniquet costs. Yeah. What is it? Like 27 to 29 bucks, 27 to 35 bucks, depending on okay. where you get it from. I mean, so I want to, I want to first say, do not absolutely do not buy a tourniquet from Amazon or eBay. No. Because no. we've had them showing up in classes that are knockoffs yep. and they're breaking yep. on the first application. We've yep. we've both seen this. Yeah, hundred um, percent. So it's scary. So you're yep. looking for something from North American Rescue, or I mean, I personally like the Cat Sevens. Yeah. Um, that's if I had to use one on myself, that's the easiest thing for me. The Soft T Wides, those are great too. I have yep. a hard time putting them on myself, but I carry one. Um, yeah. In an ankle rig, but like let's let's talk about. Um, what's a dark kit cost or um, the dark? It, it runs about, uh, 199. Okay. And you're getting the pouch. You're getting the pouch. Um, you're getting the turn combat kit. gauze, the yeah, you're getting the shears, you're getting halo seals, combat gauze, 12 feet, regular gauze, a pressure bandage, uh, mylar blanket, airway, eye shield, uh, and a partridge in a pear tree, uh, right. but all that. And, and, and that's, that's what people fail to understand is like, look, man, you're, you're getting the ability to take care of multiple casualties. This thing has, uh, four rolls of quick clot, uh, multiple types of pressure bandages from four inch all the way up to abdominal size. So one thing, a quick clot is like 42 to 47 bucks, something yeah. like that, depending on where you're ordering it. And the yeah. reason that is guys, is because it, it, it helps to coagulate blood. It's not just, it's not just, you know, a tampon that you're shoving in a hole. It's, it's okay. expensive because it works. Yes. You know? It's expensive uh, because it works and the science they put in and the research and everything behind it. Um, it, it works. And that's the reason it's expensive. 
Right. So, but yeah, this bag is for multiple people. I mean, we put light sticks in there, like multiple color light sticks, because in a triage situation at nighttime, uh, if you set up triage areas, you're going to need to have a light stick for you know, where certain yes. casualties are going to go type of thing. Right. So we put multiple light sticks in. I mean, there's a lot of different products in that bag, a litter. We even put a freaking quick litter in there. So, uh, so you can move. Around. Yeah. So it's got a lot of stuff in it, man. And and that's why I want people to understand it. It is definitely on the back, on the front of the bag. It's got MCI response. So that's mass casualty incident response because that's what, it's not a boo-boo bag. You're not no. going to find any Tylenol or Motrin or aspirin or mole skin or, or, you know, sunscreen or burn gel or lip balm in there. This is for no crap trauma. And I can tell you from the experience I had uh, last year, uh, being the team leader for my group going into a mass casualty event, Holy cow. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it was, it was under training and still let me, let me just tell you, like try and explain how intensely stressful that is. Even yeah. with people who are halfway acting, still kind of laughing, you know, cause we're all, you know, all of us were friends. We all knew each other. So we were kind of laughing under our breath and it was still extremely stressful. And yeah. I can't imagine how stressful it was for this past dark two class because the role players were segregated from, the first yeah. responders on yeah. purpose. Yeah. That was an amazing thing you guys did. And it made it yeah. so much harder for them. Yeah, because they they weren't associating with the actors with the role players during during that that class. And 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 that made it that made it so much better and so much more realistic because you know it's like well it's like me and you shooting a breeze and then oh I gotta go take care of Matt now. Oh. You know? Yeah. You know so broke up. Oh freezing you're breaking up. I don't know what's going on. I don't either. There you are. There I am. I don't know what's happening. All right. So uh, let me see here. Might be some bandwidth issues. No. Let me see here. Yeah, might be some bandwidth. Um, but that's the that's the thing with with the Dart too is it 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 helps people um, push through push through that uh, that that whatever invisible barrier they may have and and leave there with a lot more confidence. So yeah, Dart two I think is. Really nice, Clark. So, <laughs> good deal. Thank so, you. <laughs> I'm not used to talking to my friends in such a strange. Uh, I know in a uh, format. Uh, an interview format is weird because normally it's just I don't know. Like, I, don't, I don't know what to do with my hands. Yeah, I'm going to do the Hank Hill now. I'll sell med kits and med kit accessories. All right, so uh, <laughs> damn it, Bobby. Uh, <laughs> turn it get off your neck. <laughs> All bleeding stops eventually. It's fine. <laughs> um, because of uh, there's a lot of crazy stuff happening in our country right now. Oh man, a lot of crazy stuff. Oh man, and because it's not just because it's not maybe happening in the small town that you are in right now doesn't mean uh -huh. that it can't happen later. And I and maybe this is just me being concerned or paranoid, but. Um, I have a feeling that no matter who wins this election, it's going to get really ugly. And yeah. if Donald Trump wins, it's going to get exponentially uglier. I, I'm I'm worried about that. Uh, to be honest with you, and non non no no partisan bias whatsoever, I'm I am deeply concerned uh, for the fact, like you said, that okay, so you live in a small town. Well there's trickle down effects, you know, there's trickle down effects to things. What if 911 is based in a, a larger metro area and you're in a rural area, there's no volunteer fire department or something like that. And that, that big metro fire department or metro EMS agency gets bogged down with 911 calls. What if that, what if that department is, is overwhelmed in other manners uh, and, and other manner. And so you're it, man. You're, and I've yeah. said this for so many years, you're your own first responder. You're your own 911. No one is coming to save you and you better treat, you better act accordingly, act like that, train like that, because in, in, in certain extenuating circumstances, it may be like that. And, right. and you're it brother, you're the lone ranger and you better know, you better have your crap wired tight before something happens. Um, uh, because the time to learn is not after it happens. You you better be proactive rather than reactive. And unfortunately, most Americans are very 
very, very reactive and not proactive at all. Yeah. That's just a sad fact. So um, I missed something here. I have a comment that came up. I want to show this if anybody is actually anybody's watching this. So it was uh, Al. So many of us uh, have yeah. <laughs> many of us had a moment of defeat, Matt, when you were unconscious or playing unconscious, gave zero feedback. Felt like a, a failure. Uh, like, you know, like I did like belong I didn't there. Belong there. Yeah. I, you know what? That's why we have unconscious patients because not everybody you're talking to is going to be unconscious. Is going to be conscious and talking to you. So that's why we go through the Habsity, the H A B C D E <clears throat> assessment. So we punch that into people's head because not everybody's going to be talking to you. So you need to know how to ascertain whether or not they have an airway. And if it's not there, the how to open it, how to check breathing, checking yes. for circulation, uh, you know, and looking at pupils, making sure there's a pupillary response, all that kind of stuff. Check for painful response, painful stimuli. So that's the reason we do that. And that's the reason we have a, we had a scenario. Crap, I'm losing you again. Okay. Yeah. Uh... I just lost you for a second there. Sorry. That's weird. It's like trying to get everybody to, it's just that I just <laughs> muted myself. If you're on Wi-Fi. get off right now. Yeah. It's, I'm you know, dying over here. Crushing, my, crushing my, my, yeah. my streaming. I'm making this really difficult for me right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, when, I, when I was new, when like the first time I took Dart 1, I remember thinking, well, I'm clearly the only moron here. Um, I was just saying Habsity out loud and then going through it saying it out loud, whatever. I'm, I mean, if yeah. somebody's dying, I don't think they're going to care. Bleeding yeah. out. I don't really think they're going to care. I don't um, think they're going to get too burnt out. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Well, I'm trying yeah. to figure out how to save you. What is he saying to me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what I noticed in class was, um, as, an, as a role player, was, man, people would get just sucked in by seeing something that looked ugly, that wasn't life-threatening, and they right. would miss. You know, I had a, looked like I had a, big gash taken out of my face or mm -hmm. I had a, Oh, the picture, you know, the thumbnail for this, <laughs> I've got a steak yeah. sticking out of my stomach, yeah. but you can't tell that I have this really nasty wound in my neck. Yeah. Uh, and I'm bleeding out from there. Like that was, that was yeah. crazy. So people not do it, you know, following the process. And um, we, and we even talk about it in class. We try to give them a preview and say, there are going to be distractor injuries. Do not let that take away from your your ability because we know you can do it your ability uh and your capability to do a full assessment on somebody and right. go through that that systematic process and that's the reason we do that right yeah it was uh it was being an being a role player was i think it was just as informative yeah. as being a student because i remembered being where they were like, oh, oh man, yeah you you totally forgot to do every, like the most important thing or like that piece of glass that was stuck in Andrew's face. Like, yeah. man, you're spending way too much time on that. I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. He's dying. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And, oh, my and, what, and that's just it. You can, and, and since the pressure is not on you, you know, since you're yeah. not under pressure, under pressure, since you're not under pressure, um, you're able to think a little more clearly and, right. and a little more objectively uh, and, and look at it from a different perspective. And that's, and that's why I like having former students in there one, because it's going to make you better because you're yep. critiquing everything and you're providing mm -hmm. feedback to them after the scenarios. And so that's just going to reinforce your, your information. That's the reason we ask people to come back and be role players and hang out with us for a day. Cause it's awesome. It's a lot of fun. Oh yeah. I had, I had an amazing time out there doing yeah. that. And then, uh, after I took the class and we signed, you know, Andrew wanted to be, you know, his birthday present, his 12th birthday present, he wanted to be dark one. So I had said, you do good in that. I'll talk to Carrie. And Andrew, oh, yeah. we're all playing together. It'll be fine. <laughs> I told him, yeah. all you have to do is make one person cry. That's all I want you to do. Oh, and dude. I just wanted it to be like super realistic for people because that's a different level of stress when there's that, a child crying. And then we had Alex. Huge. We had yeah. Alex who was, you know, a woman yeah. crying. Um, pleading yeah, the, and begging. The mother, the mother son dynamic was going on. <sighs> Holy crap, rough. dude! That, that was, was impressive. It was impressive, man. But uh, and that's and that's just it. I, I and, and people that were in the class like, dude, that was like a whole new degree of realism right there because it was like I was there. Yeah, 
Yeah. And that's, I remember that's it. Ha having people that were really you know, tuned in to that, like, uh, well, Alex and Andrew, when we had the car accident, <laughs> one guy said, you know, when he went to check my pulse, I was like, oh, non responsive. He said, oh, he's dead. <gasps> right. That was right. the wrong time to say that in right. front of my wife and right. son. You know? they, yeah, they were sitting right there, and then they they because every scenario was different. It all played out differently. Yes, you know, and then it was different then, for everyone. Yeah, even and though it was the same scenario, same exact scenario, because everybody handled differently. But man, yeah, they started freaking out, and everybody's like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa! I didn't mean that." You know, trying to but can't take that. Back. You can't yeah. put that genie back in the bottle, yeah. dude. You can't backpedal off of that one, brother. No. You just no. stepped off in it with both feet. So, yeah, uh, and, you know, and that's that's just it. Is it, it, if anything, I guarantee you. I guarantee you, um, should that situation present itself to them in a similar situation um, or similar scenario, and and something someone is deceased, then they have learned that therapeutic communication. They have learned, you know, what to keep in their internal dialogue versus what to let their partner know if they have a part if they have a partner there at all. Yeah, you know? something I noticed uh, because I know you guys are doing debriefs after everybody was done with you know, set what scenario one, scenario two, I like their group debriefs. After that, I noticed <clears throat> when there was a casualty, um, it was never like, a, the, you know, just a random person. It was always a casualty family member or something, mm -hmm. right? They got really good at uh, blocking your view. One person would get between, you know what I mean? Yeah. They did an awesome job. The, the, yeah. the students, they too, they really, really started dialing in and yeah. then i started seeing um they were just they were just kind of at ad libbing is not the right word but man they were just going with the flow i remember specifically one at one point uh jack that big guy bald mm -hmm. head and beard uh he had had a couple of times during the day where he was just like he i could tell he felt like he was failing but he was doing great but you know he missed some little things yeah. but he had found this stride of confidence and he was just doing great things throughout the day where like he wouldn't let me roll over. So he rolled me on my side and posted his, his, on his knee. So his thigh was against my back. Like yeah. great thinking, Hey, yeah. get a person in front. So he yeah. can't see his deceased, you know, loved one. It was, they started all started really getting tuned yeah. in, started thinking. That's it. It was awesome to and see. And that is, that's one of the best things you can see is that it's that learning through self-discovery, you know, and they, they sit there and they go, if I do this, then I do, then this will happen and I won't have to worry about X, Y, or Z anymore. And so that's, that's the, that's the beautiful thing is because this class, we give them the tools, you know, we give them the training and the equipment and then they have to figure it out on their own. So I, I like it because we're not spoon feed them. You know that and it, it's all. <laughs> It's if anything, we try to make it more difficult uh, because in a real life situation, it may not be that difficult, but it could be. Yeah. And that's, that's the reason we want them to be. You got to be a good problem, a good problem solver is, is basically all you have to be. I remember the Blue Falcon Saloon. That was not fun. <laughs> Thanks, Trek. <laughs> it's at like, least, I'm not doing head. this again. But yeah. I have the perfect guy yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah, but at least your head didn't get used like a battering ram like his that year. I couldn't get that door open quick enough. And all of a sudden I heard, boom, boom. you know, and I was like, Ooh. that was his Dude, head. My armpits were so raw <laughs> and bruised up. <laughs> after you're that. Carried out, you're like, ow, ow, ow. I, I was actually giving Ross, like one guy was dragged, like my heels were dragging in the dirt and I was just giving Ross the fingers the whole time and melting <laughs> F you, F you, F you at him. He was trying not to laugh and I'm over. So the way yeah. that some people tried to get me in that car was just, I mean, yeah. hilarious. But, but what does it do? It lets them know, hey man, dead Probably. weight is dead weight and yeah. I, I need to work on my mechanics. It gives them that that that's instant feedback for them of how I can change things, make it better, make it work for me. Right. You know, right. with my body mechanics, their body mechanics, physics is a real thing, all that kind of good stuff. You don't realize how out of shape you are until dude, I'm not a big guy. I'm five foot nine. I'm, I'm over 200 pounds. I don't look like it, but I'm like, I'm anywhere between 205 and 210. Yeah. Um, and, uh, trying to pick someone up who is unconscious, is man, it's yeah, well, literally a drag. 
Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm five six and one seventy eight, and I had a dude pick me up, and he's like, "Dude, you are dense." I was like, "Yeah, in more ways than one." Yeah, you but, don't have any idea. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah exactly. it, it's it's one of those things where we just try to give people the 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 ability to problem solve, and they do. They figure it out, and like you said, by the end of the day, they did absolutely fantastic. So that's the reason I encourage everyone everyone who's done our Dart One class. Um, Northern Woods Training Facility is the is the is the exclusive host for that in the Michigan area. That's the only one. That's honestly the only facility we've done of that because it's so logistics heavy. It um, is. And so if you've done a Dart One class anywhere in the country, come visit us because I think we're going to be doing a class this next. Uh, I think it's going to be next August. Uh, August twenty one is when we have our next Dart One class or Dart Two class. Sorry, uh, yeah. scheduled up there. And so, if you want to do it, seating is limited because we don't want to have a whole lot of people in it. We'd like a smaller class because that enables us to have more runs, more personal attention, yeah. uh, more scenarios, and which equates to more experience, more learning. So, if you want to take a Dart Two class, what are the? But if you have not, if you have not already taken a Dart One class, if you're Paramedic, if you're ER, does that get? Uh, no, we still want to buy it. It's, it's a it's a course progression, and it's okay. not it's not a it's not for money or anything like that. It's I understand. Not about, it's about following a process because you get the foundation uh, in in Dart One, and then you build on it in Dart Two, okay. and that's and that's what we say. If you have Dart, if you've had Dart One, you can come to Dart Two. If you can't, if you hadn't had Dart Two, you can't come to Dart One. You got to come to a Dart One class. Right. Okay. So, um, well, I'll tell you what, I know that I will be there as a role player again. I'm not entirely positive. I will be in the saloon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I will be there. Andrew will yeah. be there and maybe, uh, his buddy Joe. Will That'd be, be awesome. That'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. I know maybe. they were really bummed that they couldn't stay for dart too, but yeah, I know Brad uh, would enjoy it. Cause he, he emailed me after that and he's yeah. Looking forward to doing that. Yeah. So. Yeah, Brad is uh, Brad's an awesome, awesome guy. Yeah. So, he's raising a good kid over there too. Yeah, he is so, for sure. Um, what else, man? What's what else is going on? Oh man, just uh, just trying to spread the gospel. Uh, yeah. you know, and that's that's it. It's a it's a slow and sure thing. Like you and I talked about offline. It's a, it's a matter of of educating people. Um, and not only through our education, but in in product awareness. Uh. And so, and, and, and what we stand behind, how we stand behind our products, uh, you know, our, our kit for life guarantee, if you use one of our kits to save somebody's life, let us know. And we will gladly uh, replace what you've used. You send back what you haven't used, obviously, because that's gross, uh, but you send back <laughs> what you hadn't used uh, and we'll inspect it, make sure it's still serviceable, uh, pack it up, replace anything you have used and reseal it. And ship it back to you free of charge. I mean, so it's it's a it's a it's a win win. You know, you buy once, cry once, and you'll be a member of the Gold Coin Club because you get a Gold Coin um, Challenge coin as a, as a lifesaver. So I didn't even realize that. Um, yeah. But is it weird? Like, does this make me a bad person? That I I hope that I'm in the position at some point where I is is that bad? Like, no. I don't I don't ever want to be in a gunfight. Huh. But I actually do want to be called on. I want to. I want. I want to. Be the person you want to, you want to, you want to be that difference. That's what I always talk about. You know, get a kit, get trained, be the difference. And you want to be that difference. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, un, yeah, I mean, some, somebody can get, can get messed up, you know, but people, yeah. get, people get hurt daily and chances are one of these days you're going to witness something. And, yeah. and that's just the law of averages. And, and those of us who are, uh, who commute on a daily basis, chances are we're going to see something uh, at some point or another in our lives and, and knowing how to react to it, knowing how to act and how to uh, take care of them. Uh, it could literally be a difference between life or death. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do people, uh, you know, product awareness, training awareness, and just changing, changing perceptions, changing their mindset on things uh, and, you know, and being more prepared because like you had just, you had alluded to uh, with the whole, uh, the, the, the very charged climate we have in our, in our country. Now, I, I honestly, I think it's, it's more relevant now than it ever has been to be more self-sufficient. And, and if you're not self-sufficient, you're setting yourself up for, for failure rather than success because you're not doing your due diligence to take care of yourself. And if you're a family, if you got a family, then you're definitely not doing them any favors either. Uh, and um, you're, you're more of a liability than an asset. 
so what we talked about um, before this podcast show, whatever started, is I've been trying to figure out how to word this, how to phrase this without swearing at people and making them feel bad, or just you know in any possible way. But if you have people, if you're a, a living human being and you have people in your life that you also love, doesn't it make sense? Shouldn't it stand to some sense that if something happens to them and you are there, you should yeah. be able to at least stop the blood from leaving their body. Yeah. You know, pack, yeah. learn how to pack a wound, put a hole over, you know, put something over the hole in the chest if there is one. And we're not talking about gunshot wounds. We're talking about accidents on farms, car Anything. accidents, you know, kids falling out of trees, what to have, yeah. what to do with a, a bone protruding, you know, compound yeah. fracture. There's all kinds of things that you can Anything. Uh, learn. Yeah, I mean, if you don't know how to do that, are you really fulfilling your your obligations, your duties as a as a contributor to as a positive contributor to to society as a whole? And and like you said, it, it's there's it, you could you could be crass and saying what you what you really want to say, you know. But dude, get a freaking med kit, you know, get a med kit and get a real med kit. Don't get some of this Jimmy Jack, Billy Bob bull crap that I see online yeah. that's just got, like, got a lot of stuff in it and so it's really cool but medical training isn't cool medical kits ain't cool dude that you know that thirty five hundred dollar uh staccato pistol with a trijicon you know rmr on it that's cool <laughs> but you know but everybody wants to everybody wants to wants to be john wick until it's time to be john wick you yeah. know and that's, that's yeah. the thing about it you're, you're very <laughs> highly 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 unlikely to you don't want to let you do not want to win that lottery, brother. That's all no. I'm going to say. No, I don't want to play that. You don't, lottery. you don't want to win that lottery, but you're a hell of a lot more um, liable to have to use medical training. That stuff you got over there on your on behind you, yours and Andrews, you're a lot more likely to use that in myriad situations. And you can take that. Guess what? You can take it anywhere. And that's the thing about it. And so. It, it's I don't know. It's just not whether it's cool or not. But like I always say, bleeding out ain't cool either. No, and, it's and, terrible. And you better. <laughs> it sucks. Uh, it sucks. A lot. It sucks. I've, a I've lot. played it. I've, I've acted <laughs> it out multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I want to I want to run that back, man. Because yeah. I'll tell you what, Dart Two, the pictures that get taken in Dart Two, like I get, we can't post all of them. Yeah. Some of them we can. And I talked to you guys about it, but that one with the steak come out of me, that is awesome. If yeah. you're like, if you're one of those, is you know, uh, everything you do has got to go on social media. That is an awesome. Yeah. And, can, and can that happen? Yes. One of my friends I used to work with, and I, I would I would float up the recovery room every now and then. I was on the critical care float team at the hospital. She wrote me today and said one of my neighbor's sons, he's 22 years old, beat cancer already. Poor kid. Sure. Yeah. Was it was doing remodeling on his mom and dad's house, and the uh, and the um, the table the table saw, um, uh, it, it I can't remember what she kick said. Back. It, it wasn't yeah, it was kicked back, but did something else, and, and and blade broke, severed like uh, his fingers, uh, severed his radial artery. They were working, they were fighting to save at least two of his fingers on his on his hands. Oh my uh, god! You know, and the dad had a belt. You see what I'm saying? It's everyday freaking life. That's the reason like, I like the, co the term that Mike coined for it. He calls it EDTC, everyday trauma care. The dad had a belt and thankfully he got the bleeding slowed down enough that the, that the kid lived. But he was in surgery. He's in ICU, you know, and, and dude, what if he wouldn't have had anything? Would the outcome have been a lot different? More than likely. Oh, absolutely. More and, than likely. A, a, a belt is a, I mean, it is a. Yeah. It's like it's like uh, it's like having a, a wily coyote try to blow up a, a dam, and you put your thumb in it. Yeah, exactly, you know? and that's and that's that's the thing I tell people all the time, you know. So, a, a, am I am I am I do I have a little bit of righteous anger about some of this stuff? Yeah, because I see people literally literally pissing money away on stuff just because it's cool, and and not investing in their lives or in the lives of their family. And they say, well, you know, I could use this, you know. Uh, to to save my family's life someday if something happens. Yeah, but what are you more liable to use? Let's look at law of averages again. And I'm and I'm not bagging. I, dude, I'm a gun dude. I love yeah. gun. I love. I'm a. 
I'm a you teach at SIG. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've seen I, your I've I seen a bunch a, of your guns. Yeah, I'm a gear freak. I love good gear, but at the same time, you've got to temper that and you've got to have you've got to have a you gotta be well rounded. You can't Absolutely. just study study one art form and let that be it. And because you're pot you're pigeonholing yourself in and you're gonna that's gonna hurt you in the long run. And so that's why I call medical training and medical kits it's like the missing link. Because for years and years, it's been the missing link because it's never been cool. It ain't sexy. It doesn't sell. It ain't flashy. But I'm going to tell you what, brother, whenever the, whenever the, it gets down, right. When it gets down, as we, as my daddy used to say, when it gets down to the nut cutting, when it gets down to nut cutting, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to wish that you had that med kit a hell of a lot more than you have that sweet blaster. And that is, that is God's honest truth right there. That is 100% fact. I, I believe that. I, and you I, better you better know how to use it too. And I'm I'm getting on my soapbox now, brother. You done got my Southern Baptist out in me right now. So if, go. if you don't, if you carry a gun and you don't carry a med kit or uh and you don't and you're wrong. And if you don't have a med kit and you don't know how to use the med kit and you hadn't studied on it, you're also wrong. Because if you are breathing, if you're breathing in oxygen, breathing out carbon dioxide, and you're circulating blood round and round. And you don't have a med kit or med training, you better get yourself right. Because I agree with you. The, and, and I don't care if it's my med kit or somebody else's med kit, but just make sure it ain't a pile of steaming crap. It's like the old Tommy boy. I can put I can put a, a turd in a big old shiny fancy box. But guess what? When you open that big old shiny fancy box, guess what you got? You still got a big old stinky turd. So you better get yourself right and learn and educate yourself. Just like the same people that educate themselves with gear. And guns and optics and all this kind of stuff, they want the best of with the best guarantees. All you got to do is come to my website and you're going to find it. I agree. I 100%. Agree. And, and I am biased because this is sure. what I do for a living, but I stand behind everything that we sell. And yeah. I stand behind our training 100% too. So I'll tell you what, I've had quite a few, you know, I've spent a lot of time in gun classes myself. And I'm, I'm, an, I'm probably... If I had a superpower, it would be that I'm extraordinarily average at everything I do. I'd be Spider-Man, but I like Spider-Man. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> no. But I, I'll tell you what, because of the amount of stress, and I, I've been in shoot house classes and force on force. I've been in those classes, and they're awesome. They're important. Um, but I feel so much more comfortable and so much more confident walking out into the world with a med kit. I've literally turned around at the highway, come back home and realized I don't have my ankle rig. Same. And that, that, that's like the personal one I keep on me. That's when I'm going to work, I still have one you know, on the strap of my backpack. Yeah. And, um, and, and who do you have ankle rig from Riker, isn't it? No, it's, it's, I've got one of yours. I've got defense mechanisms. There's, I've got, there's Riker. a lot of, there's a lot of good products out there is what I'm trying yeah. to say. I don't want to make it just about mine, but right. No. And, and it's actually, it's not one of yours. Um, yeah. This is the frog pro SFD okay. yeah. responder. I yeah. love this. Yeah, the frog um, pro is a good one. It's a great, it really one. is. I love and, it. And that's just it. That's what I tell people. I don't care. Dude. I'm not going to bag on that because no. what if you got in, it's a good quality product and you got good quality components that I bought and, from you. <laughs> But I, I want to make this clear to everybody too. I I love Kerry. I love this guy. <laughs> I trust him with my family's lives. I mean, yeah. with their safety. He's the guy I go to get that training. Um, not everything I have is from his company, but well, most of it, most of it is. Um, yeah. And for him to say, "Hey, man, it doesn't all have to be for me." He's right. I mean, because it, 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 sometimes it's it's. Coke, Pepsi, Nike, Reebok, or you know, <laughs> Glock, Smith and Wesson. I might not like yeah. this or that. Like uh, Andrew loves this slim kit. He throws it in his backpack. Yeah. I not for me. I right. like the one I've got. Yeah, apples and oranges, Fords and Chevys, whatever, whatever. You know, ain't ain't exactly. no ain't no like I always say, ain't no wrong way to eat a Reese's. Right, you know? right, because they all delicious. They all delicious, and they all do the same thing. It's just right. the presentation is different. So let me let me ask you. I know you've you know we we said we'd go about an hour, hour and yeah. five. So I don't want to go too long, much longer here. Yeah, I got to cook supper. <laughs> yes, you do. Uh, be, and we've referenced this before already. Um, the world's crazy. The world is you know the world is not what it should be. The world is what it is. It's not going to. It is <laughs> leaving the house. 
you're if you if you only have you can only take what you can take uh and it can't be visible so like an ankle rig mm-hmm. one ankle rig i mean so obviously if you like the dark angel rig go get the dark angel ankle rig what do you have to have in that rig what do you what did what are the most important things that right. people have to have all right bare minimum bare minimum okay uh, you need to have a tourniquet on in the rig you need to have some gloves um preferably more than one pair uh you need to have uh, a, a roll of hemostatic dressing like a quick clot uh combat gauze le mill bleeding control dressing whatever um, you need to have a pressure bandage to hold said hemostatic in place and, and some occlusive chest seals. There's multiple types of occlusive chest seals out there. The ones we put in our kits are the hyphen compact vent. Uh, mm-hmm. cause they come in a two pack, um, and something else I carry, I carry a cat in that one and I carry a flat folded soft T wide in my, in my left front pocket. Okay. So I carry two tourniquets because like we always say, you know, military two is one, one is none, you know, and it may not work because one's for me, one might be for somebody else or, or whatever. Or what if, what if one doesn't work on me? You know, it, it just, anything can happen, but at a bare minimum, those are the components that I have on me on a daily basis, everywhere I go, literally. Cool. I add one thing. I don't, I don't carry two tourniquets because I always have the backpack with uh-huh. you know, like here. I put a space blanket. I cram one in there because there the, uh, well, le- I learned it from you. Um, when the body is losing blood, it has hard, a harder time um, clotting because it's getting cold. Yeah. Warm that body up with that space blanket. There you go. The trauma taco go. and uh, start, start coagulating. Yeah. And it will, and it will fit. It will fit. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, how yeah. about this? Because you know, we've still got a couple minutes. At what point in time? I wanted to show you this specifically. At how long can you keep stuff? Um, that it can't because this thing's starting to look pretty skanky. What I want to do later is a video. Well, and just I, see. I think you know, actually, looks, I think Grant did one. I was just gonna say Grant yeah. did that. Yeah, but I'd yeah. like to do the same thing. I want people to realize, yeah. and also the is gloves. It, yeah, is ripped. it open? It's ripped. Yeah, I just oh, it, yeah. See, that's probably that, that's that's probably on the unserviceable edge right yep. there. I would say inspect it on a quarterly basis. You know, okay. if you can replace your gloves quarterly, go ahead and replace them quarterly. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But inspect your kit for for uh, integrity, uh, for product integrity damage uh, of, the, of the wrapper because that protects the, the the components inside. Also, with our kits, unless you get the pouch insert, uh, the the nylon pouch insert that has the components placed in the elastic bands, leave it in that vacuum seal packaging because that adds one more layer of protection against the elements with okay. that kit. So at least a quarterly. Yeah. In full disclosure, this is not the one I carry. Uh, this I noticed Good. this a while ago and I like, oh, yeah. this got to go. I just yeah. put it back in there for. Yeah, use that for training. Uh, yeah. We're going to. I yeah. just use it I for training. To, oh, off the hairy chest. Ah, it's actually, and it's not bad. It's yeah. it, it's really not. It's yeah. not like pulling a bandage off. It'd be like the forty year old virgin. Oh, Kelly Clarkson. Yeah. <laughs> it's it really. I mean, it was it yeah. wasn't something that um, made me laugh, <laughs> yeah, but no. it also didn't no. didn't hurt. It wasn't yeah. it wasn't bad. But um, crap, I was gonna say something. Oh, gloves. Like you said, check the gloves, guys, guys and girls. I have pulled gloves out of kits before that you know were mine to stick my hand in and not that they were sweaty or anything, but just they, yes, they just, yeah. Something will burn right well straight yeah. through the side. They get impressed together. It's, it's almost like yeah, a, a it, weld. Exactly. And if they're exposed to the environment, they're in a vacuum seal kit, there's less exposure to the environment, but if they're exposed to the environment on a daily basis, like my ankle kit, yeah. I, I change, I, I probably uh, cycle out my products every three to six months in that. And people like, oh, that could be expensive. Well, not all of them. Like my 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 quick clot is still sealed up. My pressure bandage is still sealed up. Um, but if I know, but my gloves, I cycle my gloves out about every three months. Yeah, I think that's probably that's probably really smart, really yeah. good idea. If the integrity has been compromised in anything, though, bend it or not. Don't bend it. Use it for training. Yes, and then buy your some buy you some new components and yes. if you buy them from us then you'll obviously you'll always we always we're, we're running sales on things to try to keep things affordable because we understand people are on tight budgets just like we are mm-hmm. and and so we we totally get that <clears throat> we try to make it affordable plus if you buy it from us and you use it on somebody 
and you let us know about it, then you're going to get it for that. life. Kid for life, baby. Kid for life. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, Carrie. I man, I I can't thank you enough for spending an hour hanging out talking about this with me. I know we've been trying to get this show, you know, do this again <laughs> now for a couple of months. Yeah, um, yeah, it's been a minute. Man, it has. But I, dude, it was so great seeing you when you guys were back here it. in Michigan. Uh, I miss yeah. you guys already. Michigan it was so much fun hanging out. Um, but you know, when you come back around, we'll I'll make sure that if nothing else. You know, when I know you guys are going to come back, and are you going to come back in the sometime, winter or the spring? Sometime in August, I think. Oh, I okay. Know, I don't know. I have to talk to Trek <laughs> about the other stuff up at Grass Lake or, or okay. wherever. If we're going to be doing some more stuff up there, I think we're going to do another. I think we're going to do a spring class Good. there, then Good. a summer class at in uh, at uh, uh, Luther, and then maybe a fall class right. fall on. So one Luther. at Grass Lake in the spring. Yeah, that's typically. Then, then then we'll go right back to. Uh, yeah, Northern Woods Training Facility in Luther, Michigan. Yeah. Okay, cool. And that that's, man, that is a that's a great facility. It really is. He's, that is he is awesome, and he's improving it uh, all constantly. Yeah, yeah, he's so. doing a he's doing a yeah. lot with that. It's really, yeah. really cool. And and I'm gonna do a shameless plug for those of you who want to check us out. Come to DarkAngelMedical.com. Check us out. Uh, right now, we're running a a fall twenty sale. F A L L two zero. That'll give you 20% off some of the products on there. Uh, training is excluded. Um, and I, the hard case and the St. Mike bag are excluded. But if you want to get a St. Mike bag, you can use a coupon code for that. That's on the website. I think it's save 10 now. And then a hard case uh, uh, is hard 15, H-A-R-D-1-5. And that gives you 15% off that hard case. So check us out. Follow us uh, for our online training. If you don't have time to come to a class, we got some online training videos on there. Check those out. Uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're constantly putting up. I try to keep content fresh, put up some educational videos as well as some promotional videos as well. So we're just all about letting people know uh, that we're, we'll, we'll back your play. And we just want you to have the, the confidence and the, and, the, and the equipment, the proper equipment to, to make a difference in somebody's life. And for anybody you know watching that uh, has not been in a Dart One, Dart Two class, please. If you know me, yeah. hit me up. I would. I'll you know sit down and talk with you. I'll show you some stuff. Um, it definitely won't be a class, but uh, it will give you an idea, huh, a really, really vague yeah. idea of where you're going to live. <laughs> like I am not a medic. Um, I I learn every time I talk to Carrie. I learn something. Uh, but you know, I really want. I man, it's I teach. You know, CPL classes. And if someone said, hey, which one do I need more? I'm always going to send them to you because that is that is so much more important. And yes, self-defense is fantastic. You have to have it. But man, uh, being able to save life and limb, um, in my opinion, man, after basic classes, it, it, that is the next thing. So it's a, it's a life skill that everybody should have. It is. It really is. It really is, it is. man. But so, thank you, thank you for having me on, brother. I appreciate oh, it very much. I, I'm so, so happy you were able to, to make the time. All right, guys. Uh, appreciate you spending uh, spending about an hour with us, hanging out, listening to us yak back and forth. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did enjoy it, please, you know, copy this, post it, share it, whatever. Um, yeah. All right, you guys have a great one from Matt Williams and Carrie Davis from Foundation Fence.